Welcome to Modern Psychedelics, where we explore the transformations made possible through intentional engagement with psychedelics. This podcast will help you integrate high consciousness living into the everyday and deepen the work ignited by altered states. You can expect balanced and grounded conversations around therapeutic, ceremonial, and recreational containers. My name is Lana Pribic, your host and guide. I am a three-time certified professional life coach, and I work with people who want to integrate higher levels of consciousness into their daily lives so they can feel more peace, fulfillment, and connection. After all, our time here on earth is so brief, so let's make sure we're really living. The song you hear is called Lost Horizon by Peace Sign. All right, let's journey. So here's my not so secret secret. (laughs) The number one tool in my toolkit, the thing that has changed my life for the better the most, aside from psychedelics, of course, is not therapy. It's not breath work. It's not meditation. It's not even the yoga I've been doing for 15 years. It's coaching. Because coaching is the most actionable tool that I have come across. A few years ago, I fired my therapist and hired a coach. And working with a coach helped me start moving in the direction I wanted to move. And I finally stopped feeling stuck. I fell so in love with coaching, even though I wanted to become a therapist at that time, I decided instead to get trained and certified as a professional coach. As a psychedelics-informed life coach, I work with people who are on the psychedelic path, which is probably you if you're listening to this podcast. The Global Coaching Client Study from the International Coaching Federation shows most clients who work with a professional coach report improved work performance, more growth and opportunities, greater self-confidence, enhanced relationships, more effective communication skills, better work and life balance, and an improvement in wellness. According to the same study, 99% of people who were polled said that they were somewhat or very satisfied with the overall coaching experience. Coaching works. (laughs) I see similar results amongst my clients every week. You can actually read their beautiful in-depth testimonials on my website at modernpsychedelics.net. Along with being psychedelics informed, my style is process oriented. We live in this outcome obsessed world where our default mode is to live life for the destination or the end result. But I have come to understand that the gifts are actually in the journey and that's where we grow and learn and enjoy life the most. So that's why I equip my clients with tools and skills for the long game of life and the long game of medicine work. I'm currently onboarding new one-on-one clients into my coaching practice. So if this sounds like it would be supportive for where you're at, get in touch with me. I would love to hear from you. And you can click on the link in the show notes or head to modernpsychedelics.net slash coaching. There's lots of info there for you along with those testimonials. I can't wait to connect with you. That's modernpsychedelics.net slash coaching. Okay, let's go back to the episode. Hello, everyone. Welcome back to another solo episode with me. So I hope you've been enjoying these more frequent solo episodes. And I really want to start sharing a little more about my integration process with you guys, because I know that the journey is certainly an important aspect, but the integration is actually where the work happens. So that's kind of my intention with this episode. And I know I share a lot about the heavy hitters on my on my podcast, Deboga, Ayahuasca, you know, high dose recreational experiences, and more recently, five. MEO, obviously these these experiences need integrating. And I don't really talk as much about how I work with medicines during the integration process. Um, And that's where cannabis comes in for me. Cannabis has played a huge role in my life and in my path overall. So in this episode, I want to share with you guys my relationship with it and how it's helped me during my healing and also how it's helped me with my creativity and producing a lot of the episodes that you guys hear. (laughs) Spoiler alert. (laughs) I wrote out the, you know, the, not the script, but the talking points for this episode while I was stoned on cannabis. So (laughs) case end point. So let's get into my relationship with cannabis. So yeah, like I'm definitely not like a connoisseur, like I don't know about strains, you know, I'm not like someone who's like so deeply ingrained in the cannabis world. I have a lot of friends that are, I'm definitely not. And nor am I really like 
a very long time weed smoker. I didn't start seriously consuming cannabis until I was like 26, 27. Like I kind of dabbled with it, but I never really liked it or understood it until like later in life. And I feel like cannabis culture has like these two sides, right? And there's no in between. It's like you're either a huge stoner or you're scared to consume cannabis because it'll make you paranoid. (laughs) And I kind of feel that I'm somewhere in between. And maybe there's a lot more people who are somewhere in between and, you know, want to come out of the shadows. But yeah, it's something that I definitely struggle with sometimes and have to find my balance with over and over again. Like I definitely enjoy cannabis, but I'm also very cautious not to enjoy it too much because it can be habit forming. Like that's the reality. Cannabis is habit forming. It builds a tolerance, right? And it can completely lead to dependency. It's something that kind of just makes everything better. Like honestly, it just makes everything better. (laughs) So I know that like as someone who has a very addictive personality, I've been, I've had to be very careful with this one. So I kind of want to, yeah, just shine some light on that for you guys. And there's been times where, you know, I've, (laughs) you know, it's been like Friday night to Sunday night and I've just been like stoned the whole week and I'm just like, what am I doing here? Like, (laughs) why, (laughs) why did I just spend my entire weekend high on cannabis? And I have to like really catch myself and kind of like navigate the ways that I, I slip and I kind of like fall into these patterns of dependency with it. But that aside, it's been really instrumental for me. It has helped me heal. And there's three points that I really want to highlight for you guys here. Um, Cannabis has helped me integrate bigger psychedelic experiences and keep the integration process going. It's helped me love myself and connect with myself. And it's helped me produce my podcast and really get to the heart of my message and what I want to say during solo episodes. So let me get into like the specifics of those three points. So yeah, the integration of big psychedelic experiences and keeping integration going and flowing. So cannabis is something that just opens up my perspective and it opens up my mind and allows me to like really, yeah, have this bird's eye perception where I can consider things from different angles and think about things in deeper ways than I would if I weren't under the influence of cannabis. It also allows me to process the experience and to reconnect with the experience. So this is this is kind of how I work with cannabis during integration. So I will usually take um, you know a break with cannabis before a big high dose experience, and then I'll take a break from cannabis after a big high dose experience for you know at least a week. But I I try to do as long as possible. When I reintroduce cannabis um, back into my you know regular rotation after a big experience, what I've noticed is that I'm already kind of far along in my integration process and like making sense of it. And, you know, I've done the journaling and I've done the processing and I've done the, you know, question asking, and I've had some insights come through. When I consume cannabis, it lets me go so much deeper (laughs) that it's actually kind of mind blowing how much deeper it allows me to go with understanding the insights that I already kind of have a grasp on. I just, it's hard to explain, but it just lets me go so much deeper. And like, sometimes it'll put me back into the feelings or the space or just like the emotional connection that was present during a high dose experience or high dose ceremony. So ways that I kind of create space for this and how I work with cannabis is I'll do it like on a night where I'm just home alone and hanging out and I have a lot of space and I'll either like throw on some music or I'll cook a meal and I will like have my journal out, but I just create space and I do something that allows me to get out of my mind and into my body. And then what happens is really interesting as I'm kind of out of my mind and in my body, this like flow of insights just starts to come through. And it's almost like it's not coming from my mind. It's like just being like flowed in and channeled through. And yeah, it just feels like profound wisdom. So that has been so, so helpful for me during integration. One of the ways that cannabis has helped me during my overall healing journey is that, yeah, it helped me love myself and connect with myself. So you guys may have heard me share before that 
really the crux of my healing journey was this abandonment wound, this wound that hurt because so many people in my life have abandoned me or left me or not wanted me. And the journey of healing that was really a journey of coming into self-acceptance and self-love. And cannabis really allowed me to create space for myself to honestly, yeah, like fall in love with myself. <laughs> like it really allowed me to spend quality time one-on-one with me and my spirit, with me and my soul, with me and my inner being. My nights in with cannabis, like smoking alone, have shaped me. <laughs> they really have. They've allowed me to just like approach myself with this fun playful energy and to approach my healing journey with this fun and playful and kind of like light energy and it's like it gives me the mental spaciousness from my like default mode network really (laughs) it gives me the mental spaciousness from those kind of programmed thoughts and ways of thinking and it allows me to think in a new way and when I'm in that space of thinking in a new way I start to really build a different relationship with myself, right? I start to build this different curiosity with myself, this different sense of, yeah, like wonder, like I wonder what that could be about. It's as if it allows me to drop the judgments and instead approach myself with curiosity. And when you put this into a container of spending time with oneself, it's really powerful. It's been so instrumental for me. And especially because I was coming from a place of who I am is not enough. My work with cannabis allowed me to enjoy my own company so much and to really see like, hey, this person's actually really awesome. This person's actually really fun. This person actually has, you know, a lot of ideas and thoughts worth exploring. And it kind of just, lightens the mood and allows me to approach myself from a lighter space and kind of just like removes the pressure and allows me to just enjoy what I'm doing. I hope that all made sense. I'm really just like channeling a feeling right now. I'm really trying to like channel the feeling that I get when I'm working with cannabis on my own. So I hope that it's really coming through just how impactful this has been to me. My relationship with cannabis has not always been so great. It wasn't until I discovered the Pax Herb Vaporizer that I actually started enjoying cannabis. With joints, I found the effect too powerful and difficult to control. Plus, joints always damage my throat. I have had my first Pax Plus Vaporizer for about five years, and it is still kicking. I love that it's gentle on my sensitive throat, that I can control the intensity of the high, and the gorgeous and intuitive design. It's truly the apple of vapes. But the thing I appreciate the most about my Pax Plus is that it's the one tool that's granted me a relationship with cannabis, and I love my relationship with it. It's an herb that's supportive for me during psychedelic integration, but it's also my preferred recreational or relaxation substance since I don't drink alcohol. I cherish my nights at home with my Pax and my playlists and music and dancing so much because these are the nights that have helped me to get to know myself and love myself on a much deeper level. Visit Pax.com to browse their selection of herb and oil vaporizers, cannabis pods, and accessories. Whether you want the Pax Plus like I have or any of their other products, you can use Lana at checkout to save 15% off your order. That's Lana, L-A-N-A, at Pax.com, P-A-X.com to save 15%. Or you can simply click the link in the show notes. The third way that smoking cannabis has really healed me and helped me is that it allows me to really tap into my creativity and get just like, yeah, this creative juice, this creative flow going. Again, I think it's because the judgments are removed. (laughs) I kind of get out of my own way. And you guys, it has been a key player in my podcast. (laughs) A lot of the solo episodes that I produce have been under the influence of cannabis. I find that it encourages me to get really to the root of what I'm trying to say and the message that I'm trying to deliver, (laughs) which is kind of funny because you think of cannabis as kind of like spacey, but Yeah, I find like 
it just helps me to focus in on what I'm trying to say and the flow that I want to say it in and like really build a cohesive story and structure to what I want to convey to you guys because it's so mind expansive and it allows me to think differently, but I don't get so high that I can't function, right? I'm in this really beautiful space where I kind of get lost in thought and I follow a thread and I make connections. And then as I'm doing that, I'll like pull out my notebook or my laptop and I'll literally just have the stream of consciousness just coming through me, coming through me. And I'll just write it all out, write it all out. And I may revisit it later at another time when I'm not high anymore. And sometimes often I'll just be really happy with the way that it is. But yeah, the stream of consciousness just flows through me and it becomes so effortless and easy to follow a concrete and creative flow of thought. And the result of that is often, not always, but often enough, the heart and bones of solo podcast episodes that I create. Like I get a lot of inspiration and ideas for things that I want to share with you guys (laughs) from smoking cannabis. (laughs) So the last point I will touch on here um, is the way that I consume cannabis socially. So this is completely new territory for me because I got so comfortable with consuming cannabis on my own that it like, I almost like ritualized it and it became something that like I only exclusively do when I'm alone. And I was afraid of doing it socially because I didn't want to have those feelings of paranoia. I I wasn't sure that I fully trusted myself to consume it socially. And yeah, recently in the past four or five months or so, I've been much more open to um, consuming it socially when I'm out. And what I really love about that is that I go out to dance a lot. I have a lot of friends who like a lot of music and we like to dance. Like dance is therapy in my friend group. And, you know, I live in a city where I'm fortunate enough to have access to a lot of events. And, you know, I don't necessarily always want to like consume psychedelics or MDMA when I'm going out. And I do love that cannabis is an option for me for a night out that is gentle but it'll put me in that space where the music is elevated just enough. And oh my gosh, I mean, if anyone listening has ever danced, well, hi, I mean, it's the best. It's the best. And it's nice that there's like this option there for me that isn't such a full commitment, isn't such a full energetic commitment. It's much more gentle. And of course, I love to, <laughs> I love to use my packs, as you guys know, because I find that even more gentle. And <laughs> when I will smoke a joint, it'll like just knock me out because <laughs> I'm not used to it. So yeah, I really just appreciate the gentle nature of cannabis. And I think, of course, a lot of that has to do with like my intention to not get really consumed and wrapped up in cannabis because I know that that would be probably dangerous territory for me. Um, I do really appreciate that it can be something that gives me the benefit of other substances and allows me to connect with music, but I don't have to be up and wired and stay up late and, you know, feel not my best the next day. So yeah, so that's my little episode on cannabis. I know this is a really short one and we're just kind of experimenting with different formats here. Please let me know how you like this episode. And if there's anything that you would like me to talk about in the future, I would love to hear from you. And other than that, I hope you have a beautiful day and stay groovy, baby. (laughs) Bye. Thank you so much for listening to and supporting the show. To stay in touch, sign up for my mailing list, which can be found in the show notes or on modernpsychedelics.net. If this episode sparked something within, please let me know by leaving a review of the Modern Psychedelics podcast on Apple and Spotify. This really helps to share these messages with those who need them, which is the whole reason why I do what I do. And if you haven't already, come join the ongoing conversation over on Instagram with other beautiful souls. We have an incredible and conscious community over at the handle Modern Psychedelics. And don't forget that the work begins after you come back down to earth. And I'm standing shoulder to shoulder doing it with you. This episode is produced in collaboration with Film with Integrity. They are a values forward production studio providing end to end production from concept to content. They do event video, documentary series, commercial and marketing videos, and of course, 
podcast production. If you are working on a project that deserves quality of production and content without sacrificing heart and soul, visit filmwithintegrity.com to check out their beautiful work and get in touch with their team. 